Hey, what's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here, ready to settle some big debates with one of the greatest musical minds on the internet, myself. Today's debate is Nirvana versus Pearl Jam. This, this is Marty versus Marty. Hey, Marty. Hey, your beard looks really nice today. Well, that's because you brushed it. <laughs> I enjoyed every second of it. Yeah, you sure did. But let's get to it, Marty. Yeah, Marty? I think we can both agree. The grunge genre defined the early 90s and cemented the resurgence of the nearly lost art of being a kick-ass rock band. That's dead on, Marty. And you wouldn't be able to say that if it wasn't for the saviors of rock, Nirvana. It makes sense that that's your gut reaction. But in my humble opinion, Pearl Jam is actually the most important band of 90s grunge. <laughs> what a ridiculous assertion, Marty. I mean, Pearl Jam's a great band if you want to watch your weird your uncle make a face like a Gilbert Godfrey bobblehead doll while he futilely tries to bond with you. But if you're interested in listening to some real genre defined music, might I suggest you spend 45 minutes with Nirvana's Nevermind. I'll give it to you, Marty. Nevermind is an incredible album to say the least, but you can't deny the power of Pearl Jam's albums 10 and Versus. Now, Nirvana gets so much of the credit because their success happened in a flash. I'd argue that Pearl Jam surpassed Nirvana in terms of quality, even though Cobain and the gang beat them to the punch. The only reason they were able to do that, though, is because they played it safe. Cobain's main criticism of Pearl Jam was that he tried to be a band everyone likes, and you can't be a major player in rock if you play it safe. Kurt Cobain and his crew had their flash of success because they did just the opposite. Nirvana famously never went mainstream. Mainstream went Nirvana. Sure, but that was unsustainable, which is where Pearl Jam, wittingly or not, really became the defining band of 90s grunge. Now, I've spent a considerable amount of time with you, Marty, and I know you love listening to alt-rock radio. It doesn't take long to hear the undeniable influence of Pearl Jam on the entire genre. Stone Temple Pilots, Collective Soul, your super favorite Nickelback, and even some of the later Metallica tunes are secretly wearing Eddie Vedder's unbuttoned plaid flannel shirt. To be fair, it is a good look. It's functional, but not too casual. Marty, you're totally right, but you're getting off topic. Right, my bad. As I was saying, none of these bands imitate Nirvana's sound because it's just too iconic. Despite their inability to be imitated, they're still emulated constantly. 30 seconds Seconds to Mars, Cage the Elephant, even groups like Fall Out Boy and Bush can thank Nirvana for their success. But more importantly, none of these bands, either of us just named, would exist without Nirvana changing the tides of music. But it's not just about changing the tides. Sure, that makes Nirvana super important, no doubt. But it doesn't exactly mean they were a better band. Look at it this way. Both Nevermind and Ten were heavily influential in the grunge arena. But Nirvana's follow-up project, In Utero, was pretty polarizing, while Versus by Pearl Jam was a continuation of their previous successes. This album showed that Pearl Jam was here to stay. The best test case for Nirvana's longevity may be found in the efforts of the band's drummer, Dave Grohl. I mean, we obviously can't know what would have happened if Nirvana was able to stick around like Pearl Jam, but I believe that Grohl's success with the Foo Fighters may be indicative of what Nirvana could have been. Grohl was clearly influenced by Cobain and learned so much from his time in Nirvana. And you can draw a straight line from his time with the band to his subsequent success. That may be true, Marty, but I would argue that Grohl learned the most from the feud between these two bands. Pearl Jam was knocked for being too vanilla and accessible, and Nirvana was too subversive and edgy. With the Foo Fighters, Grohl was able to take that Cobain signature bite and also mix in that everyman rocker appeal of Pearl Jam. In my view, this is what really led to his success. But when it comes down to it, Nirvana's shock to the system is the biggest thing to happen to the music industry since the Beatles. Now, they may not have had the longevity of a group like Pearl Jam, but they didn't need to. You could throw Pearl Jam album after album at me, but none of them compare to the cultural impact of Nirvana's catalog. I mean, sure, they didn't invent grunge, but without their success, the entire genre may have stayed underground. But Pearl Jam's kept it relevant. We're nearly 30 years away from Nirvana's heyday, and Pearl Jam is still out there with their ukuleles, selling out shows, inspiring bands. It's so great, it might just make me cry. Oh, Marty, I can't stay mad at you. I guess we'll never settle this. Uh, you're probably right. Should we ask the viewers to keep this debate going in the comments? I can certainly get behind that. So make sure you head down to the comment section and let us know which band you feel is superior. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, before we head back, you want to do a quick jam? I thought you'd never ask. All right, hit me with your best blues riff and A. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Don't forget to use your BB box. Like this? Dude, you're so talented.